Today's learning intention is composite functions. The national five essential skills are functions. A function relates a set of inputs to a set of outputs with each input related to exactly one output. What you put into a function is called the domain and what you get out of a function is called the range. So the values you put in are the domain and the values you get out are the range. The domain. There are two restrictions for the domain of a function. Division by zero. It is impossible to divide by zero. Therefore, functions involving fractions, the domain must exclude numbers which would give a denominator of zero. So if we are putting numbers into a function, we want to make sure that any of those numbers would not give a denominator of zero. Looking at an example, here we've got a function f of x equals 3 divided by x minus 5. This function cannot have the number 5 in its domain, since this would make the denominator equal to 0. The domain would formally be expressed as x is a member of all real numbers, but x could not equal 5. The second restriction for the domain of a function is even roots. We cannot evaluate an even root, so a square root, a fourth root, of a negative number. You know from National 5 that you cannot take the square root of a negative number. The domain of any function must exclude numbers which would give a negative number under the root. And looking at this example here, we have f of x is equal to the square root of 7x minus 2. This function must have 7x minus 2 greater than or equal to 0. Solving for x would give x has to be greater than or equal to 2 over 7. And if it's not, we would then have a negative value. Therefore, the domain would be expressed formally as x is a member of all real numbers. However, x has to be greater than or equal to 2 over 7. Composite functions. From National 5, we have seen questions such as if f of x equals 2x, find f of 2. You know that we have to put 2 in place of x in the function. 2 times 2 would give an answer of 4. A composite function is putting a function into another instead of a number. So we're putting letters in, in a function in place of x. Let's look at some examples. Example 1. If fx equals 2x and gx equals x minus 3, find f of g of x. This basically means we need to put the g function into the f function. First thing we need to do is we need to clearly state what we're putting into the f function g of x is x minus 3, so that goes in a bracket next to f. If we then look at our f function, our f function is 2x. Where you see an x is where you have to replace with what's in the bracket. So the x beside the 2, we need to replace that with the full bracket x minus 3. So it's 2 times x minus 3. And the last step is multiplying your bracket out and collecting any like terms. So our final answer, f of g of x is 2x minus 6. If we look at example 2, we have f of x this time is x squared and g of x is x minus 5. And again, we have to find f of g of x. First step, we must state what we're putting into the f function. So into the f function, we need to put g, which is x minus 5. So this line is very important. The f function squares 
x. So therefore, we need to square what's in our bracket. So it's x minus 5 all squared. And if we multiply this out, we get an answer of x squared minus 10x plus 25. Example 3. If fx equals 5x minus 6 and g of x equals x squared minus 2, this time we're to find g of f of x. So this time we're putting the f function into the g function. First line, we state what we're putting into our g function. So that is going to be 5x minus 6. You then look to your g function to see where x is. And where there is an x, you replace that with 5x minus 6. So I'm replacing my x squared with 5x minus 6 all squared. And then we still have our minus 2 at the end. Expanding the bracket will give an answer of 25x squared minus 66 plus 36. And we've got our minus 2 at the end, which simplifies down to give a final answer of 25x squared minus 66 plus 34. Example 4. This example is of exam standard. If g of x equals 5x plus 3 all over x, we need to find g of g of x. So we're putting the g function back into the g function. So again, we start by putting um, 5x plus 3 over x in a bracket. Where you see an x, we need to replace that with 5x plus 3 over x. This will give us 5 times 5x plus 3 over x, add 3 on our numerator. And on our denominator, we'll have 5x plus 3 over x. Starting to simplify this, next line, I'm going to multiply the 5 with the bracket on the numerator, which will give an answer of 25x plus 15. And also, I have changed the number 3 in the numerator to 3x over x. This will allow me to add the two fractions on my top line. Now that I've got a common denominator, I can add these two fractions, which will give an answer of 28x plus 15 over x, divided by 5x plus 3 over x. This is a division of two fractions, and you would use the same rules as you would with numbers. So I'm going to keep the top fraction exactly the same. And the second fraction, the one that's on my denominator, I need to flip upside down and it's a multiplication that I'll then um, go through. Looking to see if there's anything you can cancel. I can see I've got an X top and bottom, which will cancel each other out. And therefore, final answer, I'll be left with 28X plus 15 all over 5X plus 3. Now try this example on your own. Please pause the video. And the answers for a f of g of x is equal to 1 over x all cubed plus 1. And this can be simplified to 1 plus x cubed all over x cubed. And the answer for b g of f of x is equal to 1 over x cubed plus 1. Please self-assess your progress. And if you would like some extra practice, turn to page 26, exercise 2C. So what have we learned today? Today we've learned about composite functions. And when we are putting one function into another, we need to remember to state what we are putting into the function in a bracket. We need to replace all x terms with what is in the bracket. And we need to make sure we expand and simplify our answers.